Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be answering a question a lot of you guys send in to me and ask in the comments section and that is, is my Dubsonian suitable for astrophotography? <laughs> was actually a little Celestron reflector. I've had this telescope for almost three years now and I feel like I can confidently talk about how it performs for photography. I've taken reasonably successful shots with it of Mars, Jupiter, Saturn and the Moon. From these photos you can see that obviously I was just getting into the hobby, I was just beginning to start to get to grips with all the camera settings and my gear, but you get a rough idea of what you can achieve with it. I've consistently got clean, sharp and crisp images with her of the moon, which have turned out really nicely in editing and stacking. This is due to her 1200mm focal length and her really fast f ratio which means that the light can be gathered really really quickly. Now comes the bit you've all been waiting for. I, apart from the planets in our solar system, I have photographed M42 with my 10 inch Dubsonian. Did it work out? Mm. I've got to admit it wasn't what I was expecting, but I was four months into the hobby, I was raring to go and what I saw completely amazed me and got me completely hooked. So you have to appreciate that when you see this photo. Yep, I know, the star trailing's pretty significant, but I'd just like to say that the colour is pretty amazing. Like, it's pretty surprising how much colour Luna has thrown into this image. This image was a four second image, and if you can see significant star trailing at four seconds, that should really ring alarm bells for you that this telescope might not be for deep sky astrophotography. The main reason Luna isn't fit for deep sky astrophotography is because she's not on an equatorial mount. An equatorial mount counteracts the Earth's rotation in order to keep stars sharp. This means centering targets and making sure the object is in the same place in the frame every time is very, very difficult. And this also means that stacking proves an issue. If you'd like to see images without star trails, you're gonna have to stop it down to about one second. Even then, the star trails are still pretty dominant in the image, as you can see from here. But a big difference from image one and image two is that image one has a lot more light coming through as the shutter and the camera's open for longer than image two. So you have to sacrifice light if you don't want star trails. I feel like I've completely put Luna down here um, and I have, in a way, for deep sky astrophotography, but she really shines in planetary and visual. Now, Dobbs really excel in visual astronomy, so that's why they're so good for amateurs, so you can learn the night sky before you shoot it. I'm going to show you a couple of my lenses now that I like to use when I'm going out on a calm night of visual observational astronomy. The first lens I'd like to show you is this Celestron XL LX fully multi-coated eyepiece. It's got a 60 degree field of view and six element optical design, which basically means it's got six elements of glass in it to prevent chromatic aberration, things like that. I use this lens for Jupiter's opposition and I could clearly see Jupiter as well as its four biggest and brightest moons, Callisto, Io, Europa and Ganymede. Another one I used for this event was my Barlow lens. Now guys, I would thoroughly recommend as soon as you buy this telescope, because you will, I'm joking. <laughs> I would thoroughly recommend if you decide to purchase this lens that you invest in a two times, three times or four times Barlow lens and take a look at the moon. It will get you hooked straight away. I've also got this lovely box of lenses here um, that I showed in my review of Skywatcher 10 inch Dubsonian, which Skywatcher actually shared for me, which is absolutely awesome. So this box is included in the bundle. It comes with a 7.5 millimeter, a 10 millimeter, a 12.5 millimeter, and a 17 millimeter. I'd say this is more than enough to get you started on visual and exploring the night sky before you jump into photography. So to answer your question, yes, Skywatcher 8 inch, 10 inch Dubsonians 
can be used for astrophotography to an extent. It depends what you want to pursue within the topic. If it's for planetary, lunar, visual, fun time with your family or wanting to learn your way around the night sky before you jump into deep sky, I thoroughly recommend this product. There's not a lot of pressure that comes with buying a Dubsonian because if you don't purchase a go-to one, um, it's not computerized, you don't have any computer software to learn. So you can use this time to learn your way around the camera settings that you can then transfer on if you were to buy, say, an 80mm refractor. So Luna has a focal ratio of 4.7, which means she gathers light really quickly, but not necessarily as in-depth as, say, an f6 or an f7 telescope would get. With an f6 or an f7 telescope, which would more often than not be a refractor, you would get less light coming in in your subs, but more detail in the subs. This is why when you look at photographs that are taken by big refractors, F6, F7 refractors, they're really in-depth and it really feels like you're in the image, if you see what I mean, maybe. I really hope this video has helped you come to grips with what Dobsonians can offer. Yes, I would highly recommend you purchase one if you're just starting out. However, if you want to get straight into deep sky and you have quite a fair bit of background knowledge, jumping into a straight into the refractor range won't be a bad idea. I've got all the links to these products down in my description below. Please consider going clicking the link and checking them out if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video, but until then, happy stargazing and stay safe.